All right, how's it going everybody? You know that when I pull up to a park bench, it looks a little bit like this. We got some gear to test. And today we have some gear to test. So let's get started. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. This is my son, Ben. Hello. Not yet licensed, playing Pokemon Go. So he's just gonna be chilling, I assume. Anyway, today I'm out with another practical gear review and one you guys have been waiting for for a long time. A proper J-pole antenna throwdown. So dual band J-pole antennas are super popular. We use them a lot in emergency situations. We pack them in our bags for just extra range capability, but who makes the best one? I have two today. I have the Ed Fong J-pole long considered probably the best in the market, and the Radio Waves roll-up J-Pole. Now, if this is the first time you've joined me on any of these tests, let me explain what's going on. I have a receiving antenna on the roof of my house, along with a very sensitive SDR, and I have it set up listening on two frequencies, one on two meters, one on 70 centimeters. We're gonna transmit from the park, right here where we're at, about a mile from my home, and we're gonna do an A and B comparison. We're gonna take the signal to noise ratio at the time I transmit between these two antennas, and whichever one has a higher value is the better performer on transmit. But I added recently to my testing suite, the ability for me to transmit from my home location here with a specific audio tone, and we can use the radio readout to show us what the signal strength is on receive, hypothetically. Sometimes antenna like these are so good that um, the difference between them is pretty moot, and that's kind of what I expect to happen today. All right, so this couldn't be simpler. These antennas are very easy to set up. I'm gonna show you how I do it. I have a Chinese fishing rod here, a telescopic pole, and I take the cap off. I have a little clip. What do you mean by Chinese fishing rod? It's made from, it's made in China, it comes from China. I thought you meant it was like an actual fishing rod. It is a fishing rod. You can attach, you can attach a, a line here to you it. You can go fishing? Yeah, watch how big it gets, ready? Well, we're not there yet, but basically, we're gonna take the end here and attach our antenna. We'll start with the radio waves antenna. Now, what makes this one a little not so great is he uses RG8 coax and has a line with a bit of an insulator at the end. In some situations, the setup for this might be easier for some of you. I found this to be kind of a pain. I find the Ed, J, uh, the Ed Fong a little bit easier to set up, but let me continue and I'll show you what, what I do. So I unravel the end and right when I get to the top of the antenna, I tied a little loop. So I take this loop, clip it onto my S beaner for my fishing rod, and then I can just hoist this up in the air, like a so. Now I want to go fishing. <laughs> well, we're we're fishing for we're fishing for contacts today, Ben. We're not fishing for fish. That's a that's a different video. Probably a different channel too. It would have to be. All right. So now we have our antenna. I can see That's how all that there's would to be a fishing rod. It. Pretty easy to set up. I have a bit of gear snake here. I can see how that would be a fishing rod. This is just a picnic table. And go through the picnic table. Tie it, give it a good lashing. Have an adapter for BNC. We go directly on the BNC for the antenna. Oops. We're gonna transmit on 146450. And I'm going to give a little shout out on high power. Let's make sure we're in high power. Tilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu transmitting on 2 meter simplex at 4.46 p.m. on the Radio Waves roll-up J-Pole antenna. Generally, these antennas are going to be cut differently for 2 meters and 70 centimeters. So we may see a difference in power output depending on that signal to noise ratio on the back end. You should be seeing it on the screen right now. That is our baseline, or one baseline we drew for this, and we'll add the next antenna, and thus continuing the test. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu transmitting on 70 centimeters on the radio waves roll-up J-pole at 3.17 p.m. I mentioned the time, so I have an easier time syncing my audio to the actual spreadsheet that contains the SNR values, because the audio you're hearing when I'm transmitting is actually what I sound like on the receiver back home. 
Not so important with today's test because the radio is the same, but when I do a radio test where I compare different radios, which is something coming in the future, that's going to be a lot more important. All right, so the first antenna is done. Pretty easy. There's a B hanging out with us for some reason. Note on the radio waves, it doesn't come with the adapter for BNC. This makes me feel like it was designed for mobile radios or for possibly the Yaesu 818. Just keep that in mind. It's a totally different um, user approach, I feel, from setup. I have definite thoughts on using both of these antennas. I purchased this one at the Gigaparts in Las Vegas when I was there for the, the wedding for my wife's sister. It was kind of a last ditch option for an antenna and uh, I don't have a lot of really good results from it actually. I did not make one contact with this antenna. It's not that big a deal but you'd think in a place like Las Vegas there'd be a little bit more people on the air. Not the case from my experience. On the flip side though, this is an antenna I have absolutely uh, loved. I have used the heck out of it. I have one that I have beat the snot out of it carrying it all over the place so I bought another one. I bought both of these antennas. This one I bought actually through Ham Radio 2.0's website. I will link to it. Uh, it's one of the only places I know of still to be able to get an Edfong J-Pole and I still recommend them, but really only the test will tell in today's video. So let's get this strung up. This antenna uses has a couple more um, items that comes in the kit. They have a BNC adapter with an SMA adapter, female to female. BNC female to SMA male, and then the adapter for SMA. Plus it comes with an extra bit of coax that I have all knotted up, here you go. An extra bit of coax with a BNC male to a BNC female connector. This is just to get more range on the antenna once you have it strung up. Now this uses proper window line, as in a twin lead radial, or sorry, radiating element. These are two pieces of metal that are next to each other with a little zip tie at the end. Same concept, hook your connector to the S-beaner, send it up the pole. Or not. That must not be a reliable fishing rod then. No, it's just their friction fit. Okay, so we got that in the air. I don't need the adapter, so I can put that away. All right, going back into my little radio. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, transmitting on 2 meter, 2 meter with the Ed Fong J-Pole antenna at 4.52 p.m. That is the 2 meter transmit. Let's do 70 centimeters. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, transmitting on 70 centimeters with the Ed Fong J-Pole at 3.20 p.m. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. For the receiver side of this test, I've got my radio waves roll-up J-pole connected. I'm going to transmit a DTMF, of, DTMF tone to my home, and something should come back that we can hear in audio and use that as an example. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, antenna test. All right. So that's the radio wave side of this. We're going to take down this antenna, swap it over with the Ed Fong, do the same thing. Ideally, there shouldn't be any difference in the, um, the S meter on the radio that we're using, which is the Yaesu VX6. As long as we don't see a big difference there, then we can pretty much call them equal in terms of receiver capability, because now the only thing that was different was the antenna that we swapped out. Ed Fong J-Pole, same test. I'm going to hold the radio just as far away, same volume, I'm not going to touch it at all. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, antenna test. Pretty simple. Hey, I'll take this moment, a little break in the action. If you're considering supporting my channel, a couple ways to do that. You can say thanks below with the YouTube thanks option. You can consider subscribing on Patreon or just buy yourself a shirt over at hamtactical.com, which is the merch store my wife runs that helps make this whole thing go. All these 
practical tests are um, almost always paid for by me, I'm trying to be as objective in testing as possible so there can be no ambiguity and that really we're just providing the numbers for you to come up with an opinion on which is the best way to go. So thanks for the support, really do appreciate it. Okay, so those were the power output tests on the two different J-poles. I'll rank them now and give you an idea of what my thoughts are. I think these numbers speak for themselves. Uh, you can see that both antennas are much better performers on two meters than 70 centimeters, but the Ed Fong comes out on top. On two meters in particular, it's got a pretty sizable advantage over the radio waves. 70 centimeters, it's it's kind of moot. They both perform, I would say, equally as well. But yeah, if you're a two meter person, I think the Ed Fong is probably the way to go if you just look at the numbers alone. So there you go, that's the results. As far as actual human usability, I prefer the Ed Fong J-Pole. I think it is the better of the, um, of the antennas. It definitely comes with more parts that you need. I think it's better quality. I think it packs down lighter. Quality is probably subjective here. The materials they use are more to my liking. I don't like the fact that it has a PL239 connector. I don't like the fact that it uses RG8X. All of those things for me make it kind of like the one that I'm least interested in taking with me when I go in the field. So that's why I generally will have the Ed Fong uh, J-Pole on me because I like it more. That's kind of how things go sometimes. You end up gravitating towards the gear that you prefer even if other gear is sometimes better and easier. Case in point, why are there so many people that love the 818? It's an older radio. It's been around for a really long time. There's a couple reasons, but one of them is that people just like it. They prefer the use case, the, the mode of operation, and that's all that matters to them. I will mention though that the bag that the Radio Waves comes in is pretty cool and it's like a three ring binder pouch, like it's a pencil pouch that you get for school, child, school children. Yeah, I'll, I'll post the prices when I'm doing the video here so that at least you'll have some context there. But uh, generally, I don't know if the numbers are going to be the same. I suspect they will. I would go with the Ed Fong personally. So tell me what your favorite roll-up J-Poles are in the comments. Tell me which one you think you would rather take into the field. I know I generally take that Ed Fong as I already mentioned, but you know, your thoughts are appreciated too and why you might like the radio waves more. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. See ya. All right, I have a transmitter set up, which I'll talk about in another video, I promise. I've been hinting at it. But if I send this command, I didn't turn it on, did I? I didn't. Was camera? No, I didn't turn on the beacon. I forgot to turn on the beacon. Also, this camera's not on. Yeah, it is. The screen's not on, but it's on. Oh. I was in such a hurry to get out here. I already shot this video once. <laughs> the web ball. I forgot the beacon. I forgot the transmitter. Well, I can probably come back and do those. Ben, you're gonna have to sit down. I think you're shading the, the camera.